It's an interesting question. Um, I believe it's God's call because my instinct was to fight against it for so long. Um, I, I would have people I met along the road say, I, I see you as a minister or a pastor and, and I got really bored of hearing this time and time again. Um, and then people closer to me started selling me it without me saying what had happened. And, uh, and it just was coming from so many angles that eventually I had to hold my hands up and say, maybe I'll, I'll walk this path a little bit and see where it leads. Uh, well, I actually uh, denied a call for a really long time. Uh, so my background is that my mum is ordained, my grandma is ordained, and I did not want to become that girl that just does everything, does the family business, as people said. So my whole life, people have been saying, oh, you'll do what they do. And I said, no, I won't. I will never, ever become a priest. And God has a funny thing of basically every time you say you'll never do anything, he likes to change your heart. I think he has a good sense of humour. So when I was about 18, I finally started taking him seriously. I'd started crying every time I heard anyone preach. And I knew he was calling me, but I, I'm a very stubborn person. So I'm glad that, that God Almighty can break through my stubbornness and he can break through anyone else's as well. I thought it was going to be so much more of a big deal than it's been. Um, I have friends at university who are going, you're going for another interview? You know, why? It's going on so long. And actually, I've just felt so at peace and so joyful. Each time I've gone through another process, I've had another meeting with the DDO. Um, and it is really just about trying to discern what God is saying, which is such an exciting journey to be on. Um, yeah, that's how I found it. Um, so it's been a bit of a roller coaster, really, more of self-discovery than anything else. Um, I came into the discernment process with so many apprehensions, or not even apprehensions, but get out of jail free cards, I think, more than anything. So I would have, well, I wouldn't be able to do it because of this. I wouldn't be able to follow this lifestyle because of this. And so I had all of these responses and defences in place to try and convince myself that it wasn't for me. And um, the discernment process, what it's done is batted all of those away and showed that actually, you know, that there is a, a real viability to the fact that God is calling you to this and that this is, you know, this is where your life will be heading going forward. So it's really cleared my mind of any doubt. Um, when I finally gave up my last excuse, um, I really started embracing the, the path that I'm on um, and it's been, been incredible. I've always lived life by the phrase in Exodus that if God doesn't go with us, I don't want to go at all. And I think that's the only place that I can put this whole thing with discernment. So with the idea of BAP, I, I really feel that God is calling me to this and therefore I will go and I will push that door and I will, I will experience it and see it. And if the answer is no, then I know that's God's will and I don't want to go anywhere near it if it isn't. Um, so that's just been my driving focus in all of this. Yeah, I think I, um, I was very academic in school and I had one vision and dream and that was go to university, become a biologist and become a professor and do as much work as I could possibly do, become a doctor of, of plants was my dream. And I was so set on that that I was ignoring the whole other part of my life that I knew that God had been calling me for a while but I was saying no to. Um, and it got to the point where, you know, about six months into God really pushing the door of calling on me, um, I just, I broke down and somebody had given me um, a picture which really spoke to me about uh, what God was t asking me to do. And I remember saying, God, you're going to have to change my heart because I want to, I want to become an academic woman. I want to pursue my, this career. I don't have a heart to go into the church. Um, and I can only describe it as I gave God my heart in that moment for him to change. And I woke up the next day and it was like the gravity of all of my aspirations and my dreams had just been shifted to Jesus. Um, yeah, I, I have a disability, so that's a silent disability. Um, and that makes, um, it can mean that you can think that you can't do things all the time. And it's half, half of it is a mental battle because you keep thinking, I know I can't do that, or I won't have the energy for that, or I will be in too much pain to do this. And it's actually overcoming that and actually realising if God is calling me, he will give me the strength that nothing is impossible through Christ that strengthens us. That must have been, that must be like tattooed on my heart by now, I think. So I would say whatever difficulties, whether that be mental health, may that be physical illness, whether that just be uh, the 
lack of privilege you might have been born into, none of that can stop God from doing what he wants to do with this nation through our generation. So, uh, so I think it's important to come as you are, you know. There isn't a set mould for a leader in the church. What there is, the, the only preconception that there needs to be is that you need to be 100% yourself and unashamed of who you are because God is not calling the person that you could be or the person that you could adapt to be. God is calling you as you are. So you just, just come as you are and flaws and quirks involved, then, then, then there'll always be an accepting place in God. I think I would say that you're not too young. You, you, it's not that you don't have enough life experience and none of these things can hold you back. If you have even the inkling of a calling, then you should push that door, you should test it because all you're going to find is more about yourself and all you're going to be is just a better disciple of Christ for having pushed any of those doors.